Hello people, I'm Kirby, this is Kirby Meets Audio, and today we're gonna to be talking about how to pick a crossover type. This is step two on our step-by-step -step guide to speaker building. I'm gonna put links in the description to where you can find everything that we're gonna be talking about today. Okay, to get started, there's two base categories for crossovers. There's active and passive. Active crossovers usually offer the ability to vary their characteristics. Um, things like crossover frequency or the relative levels. These crossovers are placed before the signal goes through the power amp. So each output from the crossover requires its own amp, um, which can increase costs. Passive crossovers are fixed, so there's no tweaking them on the fly. But if your crossover is accessible, you can replace components to tune your system uh, once it's been completed. These crossovers are placed after the signal has gone through the audio amp, so there's no need to double up on power amps. In this video, we're gonna be focusing mostly on passive crossovers, uh, but some of the things we'll talk about will relate to both passive and active. So the human ear can hear a frequency spectrum from 20 hertz down to the low end to 20,000 hertz up on the high end. Typically, one speaker has a hard time covering that entire frequency range uh, at relative volumes and without distortion. Our solution is to use multiple speakers that are each optimized to take care of a specific section of the spectrum. We use a crossover to split the incoming audio signal and route a specific frequency range to each of those speakers. So our goal when choosing a crossover type is to decide how many times we want to split that spectrum. But keep in mind, the more times we split the spectrum, the more complicated our crossover becomes and the more expensive our speaker system becomes. So if you're just getting started into speaker building or you want to build just a real solid, simple system, um, I would suggest starting with a two-way system. And it's just as it sounds. We'll be splitting the spectrum two ways, uh, sending the highs to the tweeter and the mids and lows to the woofer. If you're a bit more ambitious, another good option is building a 2.1 system. In this type, the audio signal is split between two mains and then one separate subwoofer. The main speakers can be two-way speakers, just like we talked about before, or they can be single driver full range speakers, like these PS95s. These main speakers will cover the highs to the mids, and then the external subwoofer will cover the lows. So you do get a more full frequency spectrum from this 2.1 system. The subwoofer will probably be active, uh, meaning it has its own plate amplifier right on the sub uh, with its own controls. Something like this 70 watt version. So those are two good options to consider while you're on this step. The next video I'm gonna be doing will be on selecting your drivers, now that you know how many you're gonna need. And I just wanted to take a real quick minute to say thank you to everyone who has downloaded my build plans. Um, it's so much more than I expected when I first put them up, and I'm so grateful. Um, all of you are really helping me continue to make these videos, and I can't say enough, just thank you. So make sure you subscribe so you get all the rest of the videos in this series. And if I helped you out in any way, give me a thumbs up. That would be awesome. And good luck. Thank you. See ya.